But first, a look at some of the latest hardware and software for musical micros. Well, this is a professional music synthesizer which can create up to eight different instrument sounds simultaneously, eight different so-called voices. Now, of course, a human being can't play all eight sounds at once, not from a single keyboard, but a machine can by using MIDI. That's the standard interface system which allows various musical instruments to communicate with each other. This synth here has a MIDI interface, and so too does the Atari ST computer. So you can send control information from the Atari to the synth. And that feature has attracted some pretty impressive software from Steinberg Research. It turns the ST into music's equivalent of a word processor, what you might call a music processor. Tony, what can it do? Well, the software's been designed to be as uh, comfortable and as friendly for a musician to use with a computer as possible. So if you look at the main screen, you'll see down at the bottom we have play, record, rewind, tape counter, the things you'd find on a Just tape Just like a tape recorder, yes. Exactly. And along the top here we have the 24 track select boxes. It tells you what you've recorded, what tracks are, are active. Now, some of these tracks have got on marked on them, and that tells me that you've already recorded something. That's right. There's uh, a bass part and some drums that I've already recorded. So if I just play those for you, you can hear them. And at the bottom you can see the relative amplitude of the different tracks going up and down as they play. Very realistic sounds, but let's make it absolutely clear, it's, those sounds aren't coming from the Atari, are they? No, no, they're coming from the synthesizer, and the Atari is acting very much like a, a master controller, uh, and it's telling the synthesizer what to play, how long to play it for, what notes, etc. Like that. And all that information is information that you have put in from the keyboard. Yeah. How difficult is that? Uh, it's very simple, really. You treat it just like a tape recorder. If I wanted to overdub, for instance, a brass sound on top of what we've already recorded, um, I just press that button. We get a, a two-bar count in to give me the tempo of the piece. Well, you make it look very easy, but if I was doing that, I'm sure I'd make a pig's ear of it. Well, uh, if you make a mistake, of course, it's quite easy to go back and start again. But this software actually has a, a note edit page that allows you to look at what you've played in more detail. Now, across here, we have a two-bar sequence, and these lines here divide the bars up. So uh, there's 16 divisions in each bar there. And those black blobs are actually the notes I've played. So the longer the, the, longer the blob, the longer the notes That's you have. That's right. These, these blobs are very short because I've played very short notes. But if I wanted to change that blob, I could make it a bit longer, and now we'd have a very long note. Right. This is where that music processor idea That's comes right. in, isn't it? Just like a word processor. Uh, and also, when you play in real time, uh, your tempo as a human being can vary sometimes. The computer can actually auto-correct your tempo, move the beats that you've played, uh, the notes you've played, rather, to the nearest beat. So if I choose 16 here, and then I auto-correct it, you watch the notes and you'll see them all shuffle along oh, to right, the nearest beat. Right. Would you always do that, in fact? Uh, not always, because sometimes the effect is maybe too wooden, too mechanical, and it's mm -hmm. nice to have some of the human error to make it sound more comfortable. Right. Right, well, um, there are lots of other features here, of course, that we, we haven't seen, but tell me, why are these X's on some of these tracks right, up well, here? Right, well, that, that uh, means that there's something recorded on that track, but you can't hear it. It's like a muting function that you find in recording studios. Uh, if I was to take those two tracks and uh, put them into to play mode, I can play the, the whole sequence now with some voices on these parts here. Oh, we've got the doobie-doos there. That's right. Well, it looks terrific, and you do make it look very easy, but tell me, what, what do the pros make of it? Well, a lot of studios now are using it as standard equipment. In fact, you find a lot of studios actually advertising this as, as part of their sales. Did I see this advertised in the back of uh, Melody Maker? Yeah, a lot a of studios of series, yes. use it now. And a lot of very famous uh, artists use it, like Marillion, Dire Straits, people like that. Terrific. Tony, thank you very much. Well, that's great. Put me down for one, please, Santa. The software sells for about uh, £250, which isn't bad. But sadly, by the time you bought all the other kit here, the synths and so on, well, two and a half grand is a bit beyond my budget. What about you, Leslie? No, it's way out of my league as well. <laughs> so let's come back down to earth. If you're on a limited budget, or maybe you've just got one of the old Brigade 8-bit micros, there is still a good selection of add-ons which can help you to get started in processing your computer-aided music. Let's have a listen to this one. Well, you're listening to the music expansion system for the Commodore 84, 64 rather, sorry. There's an add-on keyboard and a synthesizer. I think you'll agree it does give some pretty reasonable sounds. However, 
I've had enough of that now. If you want more than just a squeak out of the spectrum, then you'll first of all need to get it to drive a synthesizer. And this is one of the cheapest MIDI synths around. It's the Casio CZ101. And this is the sort of sound you'll get with this synth. Yeah, well, it's not brilliant, but remember, the sound quality does depend on your synthesizer, but how easy it is to use will depend on the software. And in this case, the software and the MIDI interface come from Cheetah, who specialise in the budget end of the music add-on market. And there are, of course, MIDI interfaces available for most of the popular micros, but this one is one of the cheapest at $49.95. But back to cheap synths for a moment, and one of the other problems with them is the uh, tacky toy-like keyboard. Cheetah's answer to that is this new MIDI add-on keyboard. It is only a keyboard, it's not going to change the sound, but it does at least have a, full, a set of full-sized keys, so it feels right to play, and it costs only £99.95. Well, here's an alternative approach which doesn't need a keyboard at all. It's an add-on box called the Music 5000 for the BBC Micro, and this is the kind of quality of sound. This tune is To The Manor Born, but for some reason they've chosen to play it on one of those awful club organs, at least it sounds like that. Mind you, I can change all that if I want to simply by calling up another mix of sounds which I created myself. Same music, but totally transformed. Now the music itself is entered in a programming language called Ample. You define words in very much the same way as with logo or fourth, and those words can be anything from a mix like that, a mix of sounds, to new individual voices. Well, I'll just show you the words that define the music you're listening to now. Yes, here we've got a couple of uh, instrument voices there. We've got the mix defined, that's the one I did myself, mix one. And these are various musical parts. Uh, so for example, part 4A, that's a bit of the bass line, for example. Now, on this system, there are two main ways of entering your music. You can either use the staff editor, which lets you put music in, in conventional musical notation, you know, the dots, crotchets and quavers, that kind of thing. Well, that's OK if you can't imagine music written any other way, but it is rather wasteful on memory, and you can't do odd things like playing one-fifth notes. So a more flexible method is to use what they call text entry, like this. Now, first of all, I'll ask the machine to get part 4A. Part 4A get is the syntax there. And there, that's how the music, or that's part, how part of the bass line is stored in the computer's memory. Uh, well, a bit of explanation here. These letters refer to the musical notes, uh, C, B, A, G. But does that B go up from the C or does it go down? Well, the convention is that if it's lowercase, it goes down. If it's uppercase, it goes up. Very straightforward. So that's a descending C, B, A, G, and so on. These numbers, they refer to the length of the note. 48 in this, this case is a crotchet, and 24, a quaver. And of course, you can edit the notes, just like editing on a word processor. You build up your music one part at a time, and there's room, even in the minuscule memory of the BBC B, for the whole of this piece. It's the last movement of Bach's Italian Concerto, and that's three and a half minutes of quite busy four-part music. It's a professional quality system, costs about £160, but it won't suit everyone. As you've seen, it's based around a programming language, so you need to be prepared to get your fingers dirty with a bit of code. Yes, yeah, gives a whole new meaning to a musical coder. So, to sum up on the various systems we've seen tonight, whatever your musical aspirations and however limited your technique, it's likely that there is something available to suit you. At the very least, you can get a micro to perform all the nifty finger work. And that opens up all kinds of possibilities, providing, of course, you've got the really important bit, the ideas.